Have you ever wondered what would happen if Mr. Beast's channel was a little more dangerous? No? Well, too bad. Welcome to Squid- wait, wrong version. Okay, here we go. We start things off focusing in on a loser in his apartment, eating breakfast. Relatable. Meet Siang Gi-hoon, a jobless, disrespectful lounger who still lives with his mom. Listen man, you're not alone. After withdrawing some money from an ATM, we see Gi-hoon and his friend at a horse race cheering away. After some initial failures, Gi-hoon's bets finally pay off, winning him 4.5 million won. Overjoyed, he shares some of the wealth of the receptionist before leaving. Outside, he calls his daughter, but in the middle of their conversation, a group of men call him, prompting him to run. As Gi-hoon runs, he knocks an inconspicuous girl down who will definitely not be important later. The men finally corner Gi-hoon in the bathroom, and it looks like he's been captured by some serious Sigma males. After they threaten him concerning some money he owes, he reaches for it in his pocket, but... It's gone. Wait a second, you little rascal. Anyway, the lone shark toys with Gi-hoon, smacking him around a bit before departing. After winning a mystery box at the arcade with the help of an alpha chad, we cut to him enjoying a night out with his daughter, who seems just ecstatic to be there. Gi-hoon gives his daughter the mystery box, and after opening it, finds out that he just gifted his daughter a gun. Don't worry though, it's just a lighter, which means it's totally safe for a 10 year old child. After that disastrous surprise, he gives her a ride home to her mother. Defeated by the day, Gi-hoon misses his train ride and must wait on a bench. Suddenly, a mysterious fellow sits next to him and tries to strike up a conversation, but gets shot down by Gi-hoon, who thinks he's just a guy trying to preach his religion. That is until the man opens up a briefcase with some origami and what Jeff Bezos made since this video started. Beat me in this game and you win 100,000 won, but if I win, you must pay me the same amount. Gi-hoon considers it, but looks hesitant. Oh, and did I mention you get to go first? With that, Gi-hoon agrees and proceeds to give it his all, and fails miserably. Seeing that Gi-hoon obviously can't pay the 100,000 won, the businessman gives him an alternative. Every time I win, I will slap you to make up for the money. Gi-hoon agrees and proceeds to get the ever-living shit beat out of him until, finally, he manages to flip over the paper, prompting him to celebrate as if he just won the Olympics. As Gi-hoon holds his newly earned cash like a Discord moderator holds their body pillow, the businessman says, I know who you are, Gi-hoon, and I know you owe millions to loan sharks and banks. Play a game with me and I will give you all the money you will ever need. The man gives him a PlayStation I mean business card with a phone number on the back before getting on the newly arrived train and disappearing. Gi-hoon arrives at home and after giving his mother the earnings from his game, learns that his daughter will have to move to the US with her mom and her husband unless Gi-hoon can support her financially. Well, guess I'm never seeing my daughter again. Oh, wait. He calls the number on the back of the card and waits outside. Then, a van pulls up with a hooded figure and some other sleepy passengers. I guess everyone's pretty tired. Gi-hoon gets in and is immediately knocked out by some sleepy go bye-bye gas. Later, he awakens in a large room filled with beds and people. As a group of masked figures watches them through tiny cameras, Gi-hoon gets out of bed and meets an old man with a brain tumor. He wears a jumpsuit with the number 001, which is basically a lame version of 007. Gi-hoon looks down to see that his number is 456, aligning with the number on a big TV in the room. A fight breaks out between a large tattooed man and the money thief from earlier. Oh yeah, she's here too. As Gi-hoon goes to confront the pickpocket, a group of armed men pull up and address the audience. Welcome to the games. You will be playing six games over six days. If you win, we'll pay you hella cash. After they answer a few questions from the audience, they have the participants sign a consent form and then lead them to a picture room. Afterwards, the participants are led out to the first game, red light, green light. As they're getting ready, Gi-hoon sees a man he knows by the name of Sang Woo, a super nerd who was supposedly in college, probably got in debt from tier three subbing to Twitch streamers. Typical. Anyway, back to the game. Their opponent, this thing. It's like Chucky, but with guns. A red line can be seen at the other end of the field, and if they cross it, they win. Oh, I've already played this in Roblox. Shit's easy. The game starts, and though most take it slow, two guys try to race neck and neck recklessly until one of them is caught by the doll. Hey. Panic breaks out. The terrified participants try to run, but are gunned down mercilessly. No fair, I'm pretty sure that thing has aimbot. As the last runners are mowed down by the hacker doll, the game continues with those who are left, which, well, isn't a lot. As the remaining players try to run in their likely piss-soaked jumpsuits, the demonic doll shows no mercy. Wait a second, this guy doesn't give a f Eventually, a few people make it, including the tumor boomer, and Sang Woo. Gi-hoon tries to make a run for it, but slips right as the doll is turning around. Huh, that's weird. Usually gravity isn't supposed to work like that. Oh, wait. He realizes that he was saved by the biggest bro in the world. Seriously, bless up to this guy. Get yourself a man like this. Gi-hoon and his newfound bro make it right as the timer goes off, cementing the fates of the other players who hadn't crossed the line. The episode ends with a zoom out reveal that, well, let's just say I don't think they're getting found anytime soon. The next episode begins with the surviving 201 players back in their bunk beds. They're getting ready for what's about to be the most depressing sleepover ever. The PlayStation mascots come back in and the survivors beg to be let go. Can I go home? 
Even Sangwoo chimes in, reminding everyone of a rule in the consent form that states that they could vote to end the game. The hooded figures agree, but are sure to remind them what they have at stake. A giant piggy bank descends from the roof and begins filling up with cash, equaling 25.5 billion won. Hey, maybe this dying shit ain't so bad. They take it to a poll, and the side that wants to stop the game wins by a single vote. Surprisingly, the games are actually stopped, and each participant is dropped off where they live. As these survivors are returned to society, they realize in their own ways just how greatly the game money could benefit them. Later, Gihun, the sussy snitch, tries to report the event, and it goes smooth as ever. Just kidding. Each participant realizes that without money, they can't afford Netflix, and like, properly fixing their lives and stuff. Bummer. Meanwhile, Gihun's bro, Ali, gives his boss a hand. Or rather, takes it. Bazinga. On Gihun's end of things, we learn that his mom has diabetes and needs 2 million won for surgery. Bet you wish you had stayed in the game now, huh? Eventually, a detective hears from the police officers about Gihun's crazy tale. Huh, now that I think about it, my friend disappeared randomly too. The detective is beginning to see a connection. He confronts Gihun, but gets blown off. But can you blame him? He's had kind of a crazy week. As Gihun gets to his front door, he finds another PlayStation gift card. Looks like the games are back on, and it seems that this time, the survivors ain't so eager to leave. The episode ends with each player waiting outside as a familiar van pulls up to each of them. Next up, we catch up with one Snoopy boy, Wang Junho, following the soccer mom vans to their super secret hideout spot. Junho makes his way under a van before sneaking inside. Wow, this guy is a savage. Kill this poor guy for no reason. Then, he realizes that the red jumpsuit is just his style, so he drips himself out. Meanwhile, the players wake up, once again rocking those jumpsuits. While Gihun and Sangwoo set up their team, the snake tattoo guy makes his own. Oh yeah, and this weirdo is important now. Later, Pipok lady named Sabiok sneaks into a vent in the bathroom and sees the Red Hood stirring sugar? Weird. Bet it won't be important though. The next day, the players are led to the next game, located in a giant playground made for your mother. There are four doors with four symbols, a triangle, circle, star, and umbrella. The players are instructed to line up at one of the doors. Each player of Gihun's squad picks a different shape. Then, the doors open to reveal tables full of tin containers. What's inside? Honeycomb, with corresponding shapes carved into each piece. Each player is instructed to use their toothpicks to carve out their shapes. Well, Gihun, I think you're shit out of luck. I'm screwed. Yeah, that is by far the hardest shape. Soon enough, players start to break their honeycombs, but get free bullets as rewards. <laughs> Sangwoo, Ali, and Sabiok make it, while Gihun and Tumor Boomer are struggling. My man is seriously stressing, but then he realizes. Wait a minute, doesn't honeycomb melt? He proceeds to show us why he's a hit with the ladies. He looks away like he's never licked before. Like, his life depends on it. Oh wait, it do be that way. After witnessing the brilliance of this absolute madman, the others start to do the same, and eventually, Gihun has licked enough away to save himself. The old man triumphs as well. Move over, Ali. Looks like Gihun found a better bromance. The timer concludes, and those remaining are left to die. However, this Chad doesn't want to die, so he grabs a gun and holds a square mask guy hostage. The Chad wants to see what the point of the mask is, and the masked man obliges. Huh? <gasps> he's so cute. I'll never be that cute. <laughs> right in town to miss the main Sigma male of the entire game, the front man. He kills the square mask for unmasking. Then, a disguised Junho, who was present at the game, takes the dead man's mask. Yoink. Gihun meets back up with his squad, where they see the piggy bank fill up with more money. 79 players were eliminated, so that means 7.9 billion won was just added to the prize pot. Man, that's almost enough to afford a single band-aid in the US. The players are given a glass of soda and an egg for their meal. Unfortunately, a few are too late and their meal gets stolen by the tattoo guy. One of the tardy people gets mad and confronts him, but gets a not too pleasant gift in return. The players panic until the piggy bank starts to glow and money is added to it. That can't be good. Now that they know that they can kill players to increase the prize pot, people are quick to make alliances and the once peaceful room is now full of tension. As Lights Out draws closer, Gihun invites Sabi Yoke to his bed. Bold. Go get him, Tiger. The lights go out and a scream can be heard. Uh. Everyone panics as Tattoo Guy ices a lady who had snitched on him to the guards. During the chaos, dozens are killed brutally, but fortunately our favorite old dude steps in. Hey kids, knock it off with all that killing, will ya? The lights come back on and the dead are hauled out. The survivors are tired, bloody, and beaten. The next day, some familiar classical music plays over the speaker, announcing that the next game will begin shortly. Gihun and Sangwoo try to make a team of 10 people featuring Sabiok, Ali, the old man, and 4 random people. But wait, we only have 9. But don't ah, there we go. The next game they play is tug of war. Pull the opposing team over the edge, and they die. Simple, right? First up is Tattoo Guy's team versus some randoms. I wonder how fair this will... Uh, makes sense. Next match is Gihun's team versus a team full of some pretty strong guys. Oh shit guys, things ain't looking too good. Hey, I have an idea. What if we just stop pulling? What? That's a terrible idea. 
No, trust me, try it. Oh shit. Almost died there, but in the process, they unbalanced the other team and were able to claim victory. Ah, close call. Afterwards, they can be seen resting in the sleeping quarters, much to the shock of the Sigma male team that was already chilling. After the games, Gihun and his team decide to use their r, &R time to build a fort from pieces of the bunk beds. This attracts the attention of Tattoo Guy, who laughs at his team. You really think this fort will keep you safe tonight? Hey man, worry about yourself. Do you really think your team is above betrayal? Oh crap, Gihun just hit him with the reverse Uno, and it was super effective. Tattoo Guy's smile quickly turns to shock as he realizes the trouble he could be in. Looks like Gihun just bought a little time for himself. We catch our boy Junho following a fellow guard into a secret area. We learn that a group of Red Hoods has been using a player, who is a surgeon, to extract and sell the organs of newly deceased players to the black market for some dough. A smart business strategy if I might add. Then, Juno, who has clearly never played Among Us, is suspected of being an imposter. You sussy baka. Tell me who you are, unless you want to die. No, you. Now compromised, Juno starts to search for a way out. Bingo. He climbs through the hatch and enters a dusty old room full of archives of past Squid Games. They date all the way back to the 80s. Eventually, he finds his brother's name. Apparently, he was the winner of the 2015 Squid Game. Sus. Meanwhile, the surgeon freaks out upon hearing that the Red Hoods, which have been telling him which game he'll be playing next in exchange for his help, do not know what game they'll be playing next. In response, the surgeon goes rogue. He takes his gavel and kills a triangle, but before his kill cooldown can recharge, the other triangle in the room tries to fight back. The surgeon runs away, and the triangle gives chase. Eventually, they run back into the giant playground where the triangle tries to talk him down. He even takes his mask off. Hey, dummy. Remember what happened to the last guy who did that? Fortunately, the Discord moderator bans him for disobeying the rules. Then, he addresses the other goons. I don't care that you guys were selling organs, but you can't be given out unfair advantages. As the frontman leaves the scene, his buddies give the surgeon a nice helping of lead. Because of the incident, the players are woken up by Siren and forced to move to the center of the room. Soldiers enter, and one of them hassles the now sick old man for chilling in bed. Fortunately, Gihun comes to his aid. He ain't chilling. He's old. Uh-oh. Pee-pee. Don't worry, Gihun is now a master of the bromance arts and gives the old man a jacket to cover his oopsie with. The players are led to their next game, where they must pick one partner to play with. Gihun pairs up with our favorite senior citizen. After everyone picks a partner, except for her, they are directed upstairs where the frontman has put the surgeon and his accomplice on display. I guess he left them hanging. Bazinga. The next game takes them to a room full of alleyways. Each team is handed two bags full of marbles. Interesting. This challenge is actually pretty terrifying in how simple it is. The objective? Collect all your partner's marbles through a game of your choosing. That's right, the partners will be playing against each other for the right to live. And no violence is allowed. The games start, and each pair starts playing against each other, except for Gihun. His partner has gone a little senile, or a lot. Eventually, he gets them to play a little game of guess how many marbles I have in my sack. I thought all guys had two, but I guess that's just me. Gihun eventually gets down to his last marble, but saves himself with a clutch guess. In the background, people start to catch bullets as the tensions heat up. Though, looks like Gihun has turned things around, regretfully taking advantage of the old man's declining mental state. Our old boy can be seen talking about wanting to buy his son a toy robot for his birthday. I am very sad now. Meanwhile, Sangwoo finds himself on the losing end of a game. Though, he's got an idea. Maybe you could find teams that don't have a winner yet, and we can take their marbles. Okay. Ellie heads out, but not before leaving his marbles with Sangwoo, for safekeeping of course. <laughs> a little bit later, Ellie returns and looks for his missing partner. As the timer draws near, Ellie opens his sack and finds pebbles. Oh no, Sangwoo did our man's dirty. Ali, the bro who saved Gihun's life, has just lost the game. More and more people start to lose their friends to the game, including Sabiok, whose partner willingly lost to save her, and Tattoo Guy, who nearly won against one of his goons. Back to Gihun, he watches as the old man wanders off with his final marble, while recounting how he would watch his son play with his friends. The old man, smiling all the while, gives his final marble to Gihun and says, We are best buds, and best buds share everything with each other, no matter what. Oh shit, I'm gonna cry. Gihun walks away, as the intercom announces, Player 1. Eliminated. Rip in peace. The next episode starts with the frontman requesting a status update on the intruder, Juno. Find them quickly. The Discord Nitro users will arrive soon. Frontman then walks down to his office and makes a phone call in English. Weird. He hangs up the phone and, as he is about to leave, he turns around. I know you're here. This isn't how I left my phone. Things don't look good for hiding Junho. Frontman gets closer and closer to finding him, but Junho is ultimately saved by the radio. We found a body on the island coast. Frontman walks off to check out the body, leaving our favorite detective to breathe a sigh of relief. The players, now cut in half, wobble back into the sleeping quarters to find none other than player 212, the only person who couldn't find a partner last game. This especially affects Tattoo Guy, who, uh, had some intimate moments with her. Then, six men in golden masks arrive to the island, and inside, a seventh, called the Host, is acknowledged. The frontman invites the six masked men, called the VIPs, to the facility. Apparently, they have been digitally watching the game up until this point, on Twitch of course and are now here to watch the finale in person. Even weirder, they all speak English and most are European and American, hence the size of some of them. 
one of the VIPs asked about the whereabouts of the host and is told that they were unable to attend the game due to an emergency. As the VIPs enter the spectator area, they see on a screen that player 69 is making a noose with a blanket. Turns out one of them bet a lot of money that he'd win. So much for that. What convinced you to bet so much on 69? Oh, it's uh, such a beautiful number! Ah, a man of culture. In another part of the facility, a black mask waiter walks through a hallway and gets held up by Junho, who proceeds to steal his drip and tie him up. Back at the sleeping quarters, the lights come on as four men cough and dance their way into the room to deal with 69, who is indeed dead. He was unable to live with the guilt having killed his wife in the Marbles game. Later, the remaining 16 players are led to the penultimate game. Each of them choose a number, between 1 and 16, and are taken to a room with a glass bridge. The deal with the game is that you have to get to the other side, but there's a catch. There are two pieces of glass on every step. One is tempered and can hold a person, while the other is normal glass. Oh, and one more thing. They have to go in numerical order, and it's timed. Doesn't look too good for Gihun, who picks 16. Number 1 starts, and is doing a great job. For the most part, as the players try to get across, each getting farther and farther before falling, one of the VIPs makes some moves towards a disguised Juno, forcing him to sit next to the tiger mask and get subjected to his weird romantic compliments. What pretty eyes you have. The tiger mask VIP tries to get him to take his mask off, but gets rejected, which sends him into a rage. To calm him down, Juno asks him to take the two of them to a private place. Juno, you dirty dog. Wow, really dirty. Juno takes off the tiger mask to reveal, oh wow, who could have guessed, a rich old guy. If you can satisfy me in five minutes, you might live. Now tell me about the game. Back to the game, more and more people are falling off, but as they do, the survivors get closer and closer to the end. One guy even starts to pray, holding off everyone else. The guy behind him isn't a big fan and tries to push him off. Bruh. Luckily, the next guy actually succeeds. The guy who pushed the priest out looks back at who is behind him. Tattoo guy. Please don't push me off. Why would I? You need to cross so I can. Finally, the players have been whittled down enough so that Gihun can start, but with less than 10 minutes remaining, he better hope that nobody gets cold feet. The guy in front of Tattoo Guy finally falls, leaving Tattoo Guy without any backup. Because of this, he refuses to move and tells the guy behind him to go ahead, or they all die. But that's against the rules. And? The guy behind him tries to get him to go, but gets pushed off himself by... Player 212. Uh oh. Looks like you just got the worst possible person behind you, Tattoo Guy. 212 jumps onto him, holding him tightly. You betrayed me. Now, die. With that, she launches herself backwards, sacrificing herself to finally kill him. Meanwhile, noticing that the Tiger Mask VIP is still not back from his little retreat, Frontman calls for someone to check on him, only to be told that he was found unconscious and that the waiter is missing. With this, Frontman leaves to look for the intruder, going back into his office. He checks the trap door and sees Juno at the bottom, smirking as he leaves with all the evidence in the world to take down the games. Now, only four people remain at the glass game. A homeless dude, Sang Wu, Sabiok, and Gihun. Luckily for them, the homeless guy used to be a glass manufacturer. How convenient. Because of this, he can tell which plane is tempered and which is not. He uses this strategy to get to the very last plane and the VIPs gawk at his strategy. To counter this, a newly returned frontman shuts off the lights to prevent him from looking at the refraction. As the timer hits one minute, the glass manufacturer panics, but he gets a helping hand from Sangwoo. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sangwoo. Very cool. The three remaining survivors make it, but the timer runs out, making all of the other planes of glass behind them explode for literally no reason. Each of them gets hit by glass, but not too badly. Right, Sabiok? Back to Junho, the Red Hoods break into where frontman saw him, only to find nobody there and a diving tank missing. Prepare the boat and get ready. After some time, Junho makes it to the shore and starts his trek up a giant mountain to find service, so he can check Tikta I mean and expose the games in their entirety. He makes it to the top of the mountain, but hears a gunshot in the distance. He turns around to see the front man and his goons who just destroyed his diving tank. Oh well, who needs oxygen anyways? Juno sends his police friend the evidence and runs off while the front man follows in pursuit. He gets cornered on the edge of a cliff and pulls out a revolver. The front man confronts him. Do you really think you have the signal to send your evidence all the way out here? If you put your gun down and give me the phone, I might let you live. Juno refuses and readies his pistol. But the front man has a fun fact to share. Korean police can only hold three shots in their pistol and you have already fired two. Well that's some bullshit. Anyway, Juno posits that that's still more than enough to kill him. The frontman takes a step forward and gets a new hole for his troubles. Though, it doesn't hit anything vital. But nonetheless, frontman tells his men to stand down. Now out of bullets, Juno lowers his weapon. Who the hell are you anyway? The frontman takes off his mask to reveal that he's in fact Juno's brother, Inho. He offers out his hand, but gets rejected. As Inho raises his pistol, Juno asks one question. Brother, why? Then, Inho shoots his brother in the shoulder and he falls off the cliff, splashing into the waters below. Meanwhile, Sangwoo, Sabiok, and Gihun, the remaining survivors, are escorted back to the sleeping quarters. Only three beds remain in the room now, leaving the place completely empty. Gihun chastises Sangwoo for killing the man, and Sangwoo counters, 
saying that he told Gihun he would do anything for that money. And that's why I clickbait. Before anything can come out of their argument, masked men come in and announce that they are the finalists. They brought them some cool suits as a gift. Later in the bathroom, Sabiok tends to her minor flesh wound. She takes out the glass and wraps herself up. Don't worry, I'm sure she'll be fine. The three finalists don their dripped out suits and enter a luxurious dining room. They all eat their steak, each eyeing one another sus, viciously. This reminds me of that one game. Can't remember the name though. After they finish their feast, the plates are taken away, and each of them are left with a single knife. Afterwards, each player sits at their bed, trying hard not to doze off. Gihun goes over to Sabiok, who is looking a little worse for wear. He successfully defuses an untrustworthy Sabiok by showing her that he doesn't mean any harm. They sit down and talk about what they want to do with the money when they get out. She tells them about her brother, who lives in an orphanage. Apparently, they fled from the north and were separated as Sapiok didn't have the money to care for him. She tries to get Gihun to swear to her that he'll take care of her brother if he wins, but Gihun gets distracted by Sangwu, who just fell asleep. As he draws his knife, Sapiok falls to her injury, drawing him back to her. He sees her wound and runs to the door, trying to get help. The door surprisingly opens and Gihun is relieved, until he sees that they are carrying a coffin. He slowly turns around to see none other than Sangwu standing over Sapiok with a newly bloodied knife. Furious, Gihun lunges at Sangwu, but gets tackled before he can take revenge. Only two remain, and one final game is yet to be played. Oh, and by the way, Juno actually isn't dead. He was saved by his brother, who removed the bullet from his shoulder. So, at least someone had a happy ending. Moving on towards the final game, Sangwu and Gihun flip a coin to choose who plays offense and who plays defense. Looks like Gihun is on the attacking side. What exactly is the final game? None other than Squid Game. That's right, the game is named after the show. Just kidding. It's the other way around. It's a children's game in Korea. The VIPs watch on from a booth as the two are led back to the first game field, where they played red light, green light. Basically, in this game, the attacker, otherwise known as the squid, must run past the defense and tap the area at the top of the arena to win. The defense, on the other hand, must get the attacker outside of the arena by any means necessary. The final catch? Any violence is permitted. And they each still have their knives. If one of them dies, the one left standing is the victor. Gihun looks at Sang with a serious face and proceeds to enter the arena but not before grabbing a handful of sand. Gihun hops on one foot, which is a handicap given to the squid. He must hop away until he crosses the squid's neck, whatever the heck that means. Sangwu tries to stop Gihun from crossing the neck, but before he can get a hit off, he's gifted with a face full of sand. Pocket sand. Ah! Gihun crosses the neck with both of his feet, and as the real game begins, the plot god decides to make it rain, creating the perfect dramatic atmosphere. Then, the two draw their knives and begin to duel. Sangwu gets his adversary in a chokehold, but gets swiped in the face in return. Gihun retaliates by kicking away his knife, but ends up getting his slapped away just moments later. Now, the two are left with nothing but their fists. They begin wailing on each other, each getting off solid hits on the other. The VIPs enjoy their version of UFC as the two brutally fight to the death. Eventually, Sangwoo finds Gihun's knife and stabs him in the leg with it, sending him to the ground. So many played with us and now they're dead. Everyone but us, Gihun. As Sangwoo prepares for the final hit with the knife, Gihun takes the hit in his hand and uses the time he bought to walking dead Sangwoo in the ankle. He gets on top of Sangwoo and beats him down. You killed them. You killed them all. He takes the knife out of his hand and with a final look at his buddy's bloody face, charges the knife down his opponent's- wait, Gihun, I think you missed. Unable to finish the job, he hobbles over to the top of the arena. But before he enters it, he turns around and tells the guard who is about to shoot Sangwoo that he wants to end it. As the VIPs look on in shock, Gihun uses Sangwoo's strategy and recites clause 3 of their consent form. The game must end if the majority agrees. The masked man radios his revelation to the frontman, much to the awe of the VIPs. He's so close to victory and he wants to end it? I guess rich people don't have morals. Looking at you, Jeff Bezos. Gihun reaches a handout towards Sangwoo. He almost accepts, but instead gives Gihun the victory by going to heaven. And with that, Gihun is the winner of the Squid Game. The brand new billionaire sits in a limo and, while blindfolded, talks to the frontman. Who are you anyway? The frontman puts his mask on and lets loose a smelly gas. Later, Gihun is dumped into the streets, still blindfolded. A holy looking fellow sees the beaten man and unties him. As Gihun awakens, he spits out a yellow debit card. He goes to an ATM and uses the card to extract 10,000 won. He looks at the machine in awe, reading the number on the screen. 45 gazillion billion jillion won. Congratulations. Now you can afford an average ambulance ride in America. Afterwards, Gihun goes home in search of his mother. He finds her, but she's sleeping. Okay, but really, she's gone. Rest in peace. We fast forward one year later. It looks like not much has changed for Gihun, besides a new look. He meets with a bank manager, but something doesn't seem right. While the bank manager tries to ask him about why he hasn't used any of his fortune, Gihun stands up. May I please borrow 10,000 won? The bank manager, confused, gives it to him and Gihun leaves. That night, he sits at the edge of the water, looking as if nothing has changed for him. Then, a woman comes up to him and asks him if he would like a flower. He buys one and the lady puts it beside him before leaving. But wait, what's with that weird card on the flowers? And why is there a date, time, and place on that card with some weird symbols on it? 
Sus. Time to investigate. Gihun enters the building and heads to the seventh floor, where he sees a figure sitting in a hospital bed by the window. But wait, that's not just any figure. That's right, it's Gihun's supposed bro, Tumor Boomer, aka Ilnam. The now bald man greets Gihun, who is just as confused as ever. He realizes that the old man was behind it all and he begs for answers. Ilnam calmly points to a homeless man in the street and makes a game. If someone helps him before midnight, you win. But if nobody helps him before midnight and he dies, I win. However, Gihun has played enough games and decides he's tired of the old man's shit. As he's about to ice him, he stops after Ilnam offers an explanation if Gihun plays along. Just to be sure, Gihun puts up one final bet. If I win, I get to kill you without a final thought. Okay. The pair watch the homeless man as Ilnam gives his explanation. Basically, while his name and his tumor were real, his status was not. He's actually a wealthy moneylender. While he talks, someone can be seen almost helping the man in the street, but instead walks away. Ilnam continues, I had so much money, that life just got boring. My clients all said the same thing eventually, so we decided to make the games to finally have some fun. Gihun chastises him, but gets reminded, Everyone in the game chooses to participate. Everyone who came back did so of their own volition. As the clock strikes closer to midnight, the man on the street gets closer and closer to freezing to death. Why did you join us in the games? Gihun asks. I just wanted to feel something one last time before I expired. Dang, this guy had me fooled into rooting for him just so he could have some fun. That's cold, old man. Almost as cold as the man on the street, who, by now, is covered in snow. Right before the clock strikes midnight, the man who almost helped him earlier comes back with the police. Hurrah, he is saved. As the clock chimes, the tumor finally overtakes the boomer as he flatlines. Clearly, he is a sore loser. After that fiasco, Gihun finally decides to use his money. First, he drips himself out, completing his transformation to protagonist by getting some serious anime hair. Then, he somehow finds Sabiok's brother and takes him to Sangwoo's mom, asking her to take care of him. She accepts and he gives her a suitcase for the child. She expects her to be closed inside, but instead finds a crap ton of money. And, there's a note that reads, This is the money I owe Sangwoo. Good guy Gihun. Later, he gets off a subway train and spots a familiar businessman slapping away. Terrified, he races for the businessman but finds that he's already got it on the train. He then turns to the other man, who has a brown card in his hand. Gihun snatches the card from the guy and gives him a nice talking to. Later, Gihun is about to board a flight to the US to see his daughter. But he stops, hesitating. Slowly, he pulls out his phone and makes a call. If you wish to play, state your name and birth date. Gihun obliges before saying, I am not a horse, I am a person. I want to know how you can do such horrible things to people. On the other end, frontman answers the phone. Board that plane, player 456, for your own good. Gihun, now a certified badass, hangs up and turns around, walking away from his plane. Huh, guess he's gonna go kick some butt. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I know I'm pretty late to the Squid Game trend, but I don't give a 